Skyrim, one of the most popular RPG video games of all times. And today, that's what we're going to be doing, at least the helmet part. But we're going to do it DIY style and in my own way. And I'm going to add just a little bit of flair to it. So uh, prepare yourselves because we're going to have some fun. All right, guys, we're going to have fun today because we're gonna do a helmet from one of my favorite video games and that game is Skyrim. And basically bottom line, I'm gonna take you through it step by step and it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be awesome. And as soon as the Skyrim dragon gives me the growl to get started, we gotta go ahead, go inside and make this happen. All right, Skyrim dragon, give us that growl. Okay, you heard him. Let's go inside and make this happen. Before starting our helmet, make sure that you have enough sale papers, newspapers, and even junk mail. You're gonna need it. It's gonna come in handy. A roll of paper towels, a washcloth, aluminum foil, and refrigerator tape. These items are important before starting small bag of screws and a small bag of washers. Having clay on hand is good but not really necessary during this project. You can get the same results by mixing wood glue, flour, and a touch of water together until you get a paste-like substance. I decided to use this one, but I will add my own modifications and much smaller horns. Before starting, I decided to do a quick sketch based on the helmet from the game. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up by going ahead and wrapping my head. Art can be painful, but it can also be a little embarrassing. But all in all, this step is extremely important. After removing the mold from my head, I immediately trimmed it with a pair of scissors. Please don't use your best scissors for doing this step. After removing the mold from my head, I applied refrigerator tape to the exposed aluminum foil portions. And just like grade school, I added glue and shredded newspaper onto the surface. This part is extremely important. After trimming the edges of the mold, I used the black magic marker to label the front and the back, and also the sides. I measured and cut a piece of wire to add to the edge of the helmet. This will improve the shape and also give it more strength and durability. After installing the underwire, I adjusted the curve of the helmet. And after the bottom was done, I added a cardboard trim to the top and around the rim of the helmet. All right. All right, as you can see, the helmet is complete. It looks good. And um, it's solid. It's nice and sturdy. Has a good texture to it. Now I did a few things off camera. I cut a strip of cardboard and added to the top to give it more of a military look. And also, too, with scissors, I trimmed the sides to give it more of a shape and just make it look better all together. But here's the most important part. Okay, I can move my head from side to side, up and down, and it doesn't give me any problems and it feels great. And so all in all, it looks good. But now we're ready to move on to the most important part. And that's putting horns on this bad boy. So let's go ahead and get that going right now. In order to make sure that the horns aren't too big and clumsy, I decided to use two small paint bottles. These will work just fine. I cut the empty paint bottles at a vertical angle. 
and I adjust it onto the helmet making sure that they mount properly in order for the horns to fit just right. And here I'm using tape to align the cut bottle tops onto the helmet making sure that they're nice and even. I decided to add a strip of cardboard to the top portion of the hood mounts. This will give it more of a streamlined look. After taping on the bottle tops to the helmet, I quickly covered it with glue and shredded newspaper. Now we're ready to move on to what truly makes this a Skyrim helmet, and that is the horns. I got a piece of wire and I bent it and creased it directly in the center. Then I cut the wire into two equal pieces. With a pocket knife, I placed a small hole in the center of the paint bottle lids, and then I curved the end of the wire and ran it through the hole. After this was done, I wrapped both the bottle caps and the wire carefully with tape. After wrapping the wire and cap, I gave it a few pulls to make sure that it was nice and secure. And for the next step, I just simply crunched up a piece of typing paper folded it into a triangle shape and wrapped it around the wire. Oh yeah, I secured it with a piece of tape. And then I curved them and added more glue and newspaper. Before I continued on to the next step, I decided to check the mounting of the horns and the weight of the helmet. piece of paper with glue then I wrapped it with parts from a ripped up paper bag then I added glue and clay for the final finish as you can see the horns are dry and ready to be painted as soon as the horns were nice and dry I took them outside and sprayed them with a coat of primer all right guys we're at home stretch right now and I gotta say and take my word for it, we are done. I've been working on this for about a week now, and um, have you ever had one of those projects where you go, okay, this is gonna be cake, and it actually turns out to be more work than what you thought? Well, with me, this is it. But I'm enjoying the ride, and um, you know, pretty much we're almost done. But anyway, uh, as you can see, I did a little bit of work off camera. I added a strip of cardboard along the back and I put another strip on the uh, back going, you know, across the top to the front. And on the very top, I made a little diamond design um, pretty much to just give it more of a warrior helmet uh, type of look. And um, it's hard, it's durable, it's tough. And, um, yeah, you know, pretty much, basically, I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with it. Yeah, I um, did the same thing with the horns also. What I did with the horns was I uh, added just a touch of clay, not a lot of clay, so it doesn't feel like a, you know, center block on my head. And I got a butter knife while the clay was wet and just put little scratches you know, along the uh, sides to, you know, give it more of a, you know, bone look or horn look or whatever. And then on the very tips, instead of using clay, what I did was I used toilet paper or tissue paper, excuse me. I used tissue paper with glue and just molded it to the point. And I did the same thing around the edge where the horns screw into the helmet. And this will actually reinforce the the horns into the helmet and it just make it look better and more professional. So yeah, we're ready to get, get everything painted and let's get this done. All right, guys, I know this next step looks kind of weird, but it's extremely important. What we're doing right now is making our shield visor. And this is done by taping a piece of typing paper to your face, drawing a circle where your eye sockets are, taking it off your face, and now we're prepared to make our template. This next part is pretty simple. We're simply just gonna draw the shape of the Skyrim mask around the eye socket circles. They cut out eye stencil onto a piece of cardboard to see if it would work the way I thought it would.
In order to get exact rise and lift of the visor, I attach the trace cardboard onto the helmet using thumbtacks. With a great deal of care, I slowly trace the visor shield template onto a piece of cardboard. After cutting out three identical visor shields from cardboard, I glued them on top of each other and curved them as I went along. After constructing the visor shield, I thumbtacked it onto the helmet and gave it a quick test run. After the shield visor was measured and cut, I used refrigerator tape to secure washers on both sides. After taping washers alongside of the visor, I added glue for extra support. After covering the shield visor with wood glue, I carefully placed torn paper towels onto it, then I covered it again with more wood glue. Now that I'm done with the construction of the helmet and the occupying pieces, I'm ready to start blasting it with spray paint. Whenever you're using a spray aerosol, you want to make sure that your mouth and nose is covered. You don't want to inhale any of this stuff. Outside, I quickly spray painted the helmet from top to bottom covering every inch. After spray painting the helmet and the additional pieces, I immediately started filling the cracks and crevices on the helmet with wood glue. And after the wood glue was completely dry, I went outside and spray painted on an additional coat. After spray painting the helmet, if you discover a crack that you just can't live with, simply cover it with a little wood glue and clay. Rub it in, let it dry, and just spray paint that area. There is no need in spray painting the entire helmet. As an extra precaution, I decided to put a little bit of silicone on the inside rim of the helmet. This will protect from moisture and perspiration. Basically, I'm happy with it. I'm quite pleased with it. I also, too, added two more coats of uh, spray paint to the um, visor, which is going to, you know, go like this on the front, you know, up and down just like so. I just thought about something. Now, the same technique that I use for this visor, you know, you cosplayers out there want to cosplay as, you know, Wonder Woman. So you can use the same technique to do that. Everything looks great, but I'm really pleased with the way these horns look. It almost has like a plastic um, machine or manufactured look. I'm going to hold the horns up close to the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. Like, for example, it's a total blend. I mean, everything is complete on here. It looks great. And the ridges and the crevices in there still has a horn look, which is fantastic. And I totally love that. And so, yeah, I am very, very pleased with this. Now that we're done with the spray painting of our helmet, we're ready to move on to the next part of our project, which is applying the texturizer. And this is done by adding glue and paint together and mixing it until it makes like a tar-like substance. It doesn't look very pretty, but it's extremely important for the next phase of our project. If only I could move this fast in real life. covered the helmet with our texturizer, um, our glue and paint mix, which I call texturizer. And I did both horns, so that's done. And with the visor, I put the uh, texturizer on the inside and the outside. And I got a little drip there, that's okay. So yeah, everything is done. Oh yeah, now, as you can tell, it's already wet. So I'm gonna hold this up close to the camera 
and just show you how how it looks wet and when it dries it's going to tone down a whole lot but i know right now it has a texture just like venom Junior's got shit you will never see it has that tar oily type of look now that the texturizer is completely dry we're ready to move on to the next step Outside, I applied silver and gold paint onto the helmet and the additional pieces. Now that the helmet and the additional pieces are covered in gold, we're ready to move on to the next step, and that's covering them again with the acrylic black paint. All right, guys, this is the most important step of all, but it's pretty easy. What you're gonna do is just get the sponge and wet it with a little bit of warm water in the container. Then afterward, you're gonna use it to rub off some of the black paint. Only rub it enough to where the gold shows through. Once the gold shows through, leave it alone and move on to another part. What you're trying to do is achieve a battle-worn or weathered look onto the helmet. Trust me, it's gonna look great after it's done. guys here we go the end result I'm gonna let the pieces speak for themselves all right now we're ready for our color transitioning clear coat shake well before using and what I'm doing now is applying a color transitioning clear coat. And what this particular clear coat does is transfer from one color to another, depending on the angle and light in which it was viewed. Hey, thumbs up to AutoZone. They were only guys who had this particular brand. I added two coats of clear to the helmet and the additional pieces. As the helmet sits and dries on my patio chair, take a look at how the colors transition from green to purple with the use of different light and also to change of direction. All right, this step is pretty easy, but you gotta go nice and slow. Make sure that you remove the tape at a nice, slow, even pace. You don't wanna rip or damage any of the paint that's on the helmet itself. After carefully removing the tape from the horn mounts, I cleaned off the area with a kitchen towel. I want to make sure that the horns screw on nice and smooth. In this step, I used a small nail clamped onto vice grips to resize the holes in the shield visor. Then I applied the same technique onto the helmet, but instead of a nail, I used a cross tip screwdriver. For this next step, you're going to need a small bag of screws and a small bag of washers. Just make sure that the screws and washers match. Oh yeah, make sure that the screws are short, at least under one inch. After adjusting the holes alongside of the helmet, I placed washers on the inside and I secured them in place with mounting screws. After I got the shield visor mounted onto the helmet, I used the cross tip screwdriver and the vice grips to tighten everything up. At the last minute, I decided to beef up my helmet just a little bit, so I head to one of my local arts and crafts stores to pick up a little bit of bling. I gotta hurry up and get there before they close. For everybody out there, please don't drive this fast. Okay, as you can see, I'm inside, and um, right now I 
I'm not really seeing too much of what I want. They got a good selection, but it's not really anything to catch my eye, you know. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, these little something like that. It looks good, but I think that would be too big for the helmet. I need something small, something small. Oh, yeah, there you go. That I think that's it. It's gold. It looks good. And um, I think it looked good on the uh, helmet. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and get two of these. In this next step, I'm using a pair of vice grips and needle nose pliers to remove the needle from the thumbtacks. If you don't have vice grips, a pair of pliers works great also. After removing the needles from the thumbtacks, I arranged them on a plain piece of typing paper. I used two pieces of tape stuck together in order to remove all of the thumbtack heads from my table. After attaching the shield visor onto the helmet, I used clear silicone to lock the mounting bolts in place. Then I got the bright idea of using the thumbtack heads to cover up the bolts to give it more of a realistic look. While gluing the thumbtack heads onto the helmet, I space them two fingers apart. This way I'm guaranteed that I will have enough to go around. All right guys, thanks for hanging in there with me. I know it was a long one, but as you can see, it was worth the wait. Now, if you want to see me continue making cool items like this, subscribe to my channel, turn on those notifications, and most important, give me a thumbs up, okay? Because, uh, we definitely got some more stuff planned for the future. But anyway, I have to run. Stay awesome. Oh, yeah, and one more thing. I'll see you later. Thank you.